So now let's go ahead and create a CloudFront distribution. Now in this lesson, I will do it by hand using the AWS console. That will help anyone who's getting started with CloudFront to have a very good understanding about CloudFront. And then in the next lesson, let's use CloudFormation to create our CloudFront distribution using infrastructure as code. I'm in AWS console. I will go to CloudFront here, or you can just search for CloudFront. And here we go. So CloudFront is a CDN. We can also use CloudFront as a reverse proxy so that uh, it will be the front facing service for all your AWS resources as well as your on-premises resources or any other server resources. So in CloudFront, we have to create something called distributions. So that's where we are going to start. So we'll click here, create distribution. And when we are creating distribution, we need to provide the origin domain. For one distribution, you can have one or more origins. So in this lesson, we are going to add our API gateway domain as an origin to our CloudFront distribution. So we need to add that uh, API gateway domain. So I'll search for API gateway and let's open it in a new tab. So let's find our dev nodes API. So here I will go to the dashboard link. Now in this page, I can find the domain name, which is this part. So let me copy the entire thing and I'll paste it here and I will copy only the domain name. So I'll just copy that, go back to my CloudFront distribution. I'll just paste it there. So let's use this. Now I have to select the protocol that my origin supports. It's HTTP or HTTPS only. Let's see. So if I go to the API gateway, you can see this is a HTTPS link. So I can easily select HTTPS only. So if your origin only supports HTTP, select this. So if it supports both like HTTP and HTTPS, you can just select match weaver. So I select HTTPS and, and I will select the latest TLS 1.2 version. So this is the latest version that CloudFront supports. And then I can also set a default path. For example, in the API gateway, if you want to add slash dev path for all the requests, I can add it here. But uh, I'm not going to add it there, but I will add it to the behavior. I'll show you in a bit. Then I can give it a name. So let's call it API origin. Now here I can also add a custom header. Now CloudFront will include this header for all the requests that it sends to our origin. So I can click header and add here. Now this is useful in many ways. One of the use cases there is if you are using a public HTTP endpoint and we wanted to make sure that all the requests are coming through the CloudFront, I can add that header and verify if that header exists from my public HTTP endpoint. Now this could be a on-premises server. So that way I can reject any traffic that do not in, uh, include that header in the request. That means they are not coming from CloudFront and I can only accept the request with this header. And then we know that these requests are coming through CloudFront and these requests are uh, scanned by WAF as well. But here I'm not going to add anything, uh, any you know custom header because uh, we are calling our API gateway. And then I will go to the default cache behavior section. Here for any CloudFront distribution, we need to have a default cache behavior and that is def de uh, denoted as star. This is this wildcard. And apart from this one, we can have any other paths as well. But the default path is uh, necessary. So we'll leave it as it is. We'll leave this as it is. And I'll leave the rest of the options also default values. And uh, in this setting section, I can choose the price class. Now in AWS, there are a lot of edge locations. Now these are the data centers that uh, it used to cache our data. And if you're using all the edge locations, then uh, it guarantees the best performance because uh, 
this data will be available in all the places that the users are accessing from and you can also choose the other options like north america and europe uh, North America, Europe, Asia, Middle East, Africa and so on. So if your application only serve customers in North America and Europe, you can select this one. But if you are serving global customers, you can also select use all edge location. Now this is the part where we can attach a WAF. So here I can uh, select the WAF if I have already created, but here I have not created a WAF yet or the web application firewall we are going to create it in a upcoming lesson and we'll leave the rest of the options as default and i'll click create distribution so distribution is being created and it's going to take uh, several minutes up to i think 15 minutes you can see right now it is at the deploying stage but i can go into it now you can see there's this domain name associated with this distribution. This is the domain name that we are going to use to access our CloudFront. And if you go to the origins, now I can see my API origin with the API uh, origin domain name. And that is considered as a custom origin. And I can go to the behavior. So far we have this default path pattern. I'm going to add another path pattern. I will uh, leave this default as is. But let's go ahead and create another behavior. And here I want to particularly capture the request uh, with the ending path pattern slash dev slash star. So it could be slash dev slash nodes with the get request. So uh, we can return all our nodes and all the other path patterns that our API supports. Uh, if I go to the resource section, you can actually see all these path patterns. We have slash nodes. And also we have slash node slash ID. So let's capture all these things and route that request to our origin. So that's what we are going to do. So let's add that path pattern slash dev slash star. And then we can pick the origin. To which origin do I need to route this request to? That is our API origin. And here I can also pick the Weaver protocol. So Weaver is the browser or the client that uses the CloudFront domain to access our origins. So here we need to specify the protocol. I will select HTTPS only. So they are only able to call our CloudFront distribution with HTTPS. And what type of HTTP methods can they use? So here I'll use get, uh, put, post, patch, delete because uh, our API supports all of these. So we have to allow that. And then let's go to this cache key and origin request section. Now cache key essentially is a unique identifier of the uh, object that we want to cache in CloudFront. Now here I will select this cache policy and origin request policy that is recommended. If I scroll down a little bit, there is this default cache policy from uh, CloudFront and I can also create my own cache policy. So let's go ahead and create our own cache policy and then I will explain what it is. So here I will name this as uh, uh, API cache policy and I can set some TTL settings. I can set the minimum TTL, maximum TTL and default TTL. Now these TTL settings works together with the cache control settings that we can send through HTTP headers. But I'm not going to talk about that in deep in this lesson. But here I will set my default TTL to 300 seconds. That means we will cache our object by default for 300 seconds. That is 5 minutes. Now here I can set the cache key settings. Now I mentioned this cache key is a unique identifier of the object that we are caching in CloudFront. Now in order to create this cache key, we can choose the headers, query strings and cookies. By default, the headers is set to none, query string is none and also cookies is none. That means CloudFront will ignore the changes in the headers, query strings and cookies when it is creating the cache key for the objects. But there's this option that we can include certain headers to include in the cache key. Now I selected the include uh, the following headers and I can select the header and here let me select the authorization header. 
So now when CloudFront create our cache key, it will consider the authorization header. Now when we were sending request to our API gateway, we were always including the authorization header. Now this is a way of authorizing our request. Now when we include authorization header in our cache key in CloudFront, it will consider the changes in the authorization header to create a different cache keys. Now this is really useful because when one user logs in, he gets a one uh, authorization key and another user logs in, he gets a different authorization key because this is the ID token that we use as the authorization key here. Because we whitelisted authorization header then, so CloudFront will create different caching object for these individual users, which is great. So this will ensure one user will not receive the cache data from another user from CloudFront. So let's go ahead and leave the others as default. We are not going to set any query strings or cookies. And I'll go ahead and click create. So API cache policy is now created. So let's go to the CloudFront here and I will choose refresh button in the cache policy and let's see I should see the API cache policy I just created so here under custom section I can see the API cache policy I'll select that one okay and I'll click create behavior so now I have a new behavior pointing to the API origin now have a look both of these behaviors, the default behavior and the behavior we just created is pointing to the same API origin. But there's this precedence value. Precedence value zero is added to the slash dev slash star and one is added to the default one. In CloudFront, lower precedence value gets the higher priority. So if I have any request that uh, will end with slash dev slash nodes or whatever, with the prefix of slash dev slash star, it will use this path pattern to resolve our uh, routes. Okay, let's see. Now our distribution is enabled. Now we can actually test it. So let's go ahead and copy our distribution name. And I'll open a new tab in Postman and let's paste it here. And let's add slash dev slash notes. And we are sending a get request to get all the nodes. Let's send this request without any authorization header. And let's see if I get that unauthorized error. So as expected, I'm getting this unauthorized error because uh, we have not included the authorization key here. So I'll go to Cognito. And in our dev user pool, we have two users, Manoj and test user. So let's log in with Manoj. So let's log in with the Manoj and get the ID token. Now I have the login uh, URL for our hosted UI already uh, created in this notepad. Let me hit enter. So let's sign in with the Manoj user. Okay, I got the tokens and let me paste it here. So our ID token starts here and it ends here. So I'll copy the ID token and I'll add the authorization header and let's put the value and then I will issue this request. Well, now I get an item from my DynamoDB table. Now let me quickly show you the DynamoDB table. So this is the notes dev table. It has uh, this record with notes ID 100 and the name hello. Now let's create another item. I will add the nose ID 200, the name hello again, create item. So now there are two items. So if I go here and send this request one more time, I'm still getting only one item. Because remember we set the default TTL to five minutes. So until that uh, five minutes time expires, we will only receive uh, this item but what if we quickly log in with another user so I'll use this test user this time so let me go ahead and sign in as a different user test and I will sign in now this is another set of tokens so let me paste it here just underneath this 
and let's uh, copy the ID token for this second user and go to the postman and let's uh, create another tab under the header let's set the authorization header and paste the value here that is the new value and also I'll get the same uh, get URL the CloudFront get URL and I will issue the request again well have a look now for this user I receive both of these items but for this user I think this five minutes is not yet passed I am receiving only one item what if I go ahead and add another item let me quickly add uh, another item create item and I'll add the 300 notes ID and name hi create item so now I have three items so let's go to the first user and I'll send the request so I'm still receiving one for the second user I got two let's send the request again I'm receiving only two again so CloudFront is keeping two caches for these two individual users we can wait until these five minutes passed if the first one it is now nearly finished but uh, if we want to invalidate the cache by force we can do that we can go to CloudFront let's go to the CloudFront distribution I'll go into this one and there's this invalidation section you can click there and I can create an invalidation so I'm going to invalidate all the object paths that CloudFront cached so I add this wildcard slash star and click create invalidation now CloudFront charges a little amount invalidate the cache but this is really useful if you want to like clear cache for everyone and now let's go to the first user and send this request now I'm getting all these three items for the second user also if I send the request again I receive all three items now these are again got cached I hope now you understand how CloudFront works and how caching works